Okay, let's continue working on this rock wall. I have all the rock work done. Now let's start tiling. And the Sawtiel tiles just like the floor and they're going to top this wall. Just gives a little variety from the other wall, adds interest to the painting, and gives us a the warmth of this curve will bring you into the nasturtiums. You'll follow them around through the rest of the painting. Up to that turquoise blue door. So I just begin here just doing my stair steps. Just the very tip of these tiles will get some sunlight. Not much at all. And I'm going to have nasturtiums over each step. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and just paint that totally out. And just see. I may not put nasturtiums over that step. I'm going to leave the shadows there for now. I can come back later and, and take those out if I decide not to have nasturtiums on this step. We'll just kind of see. May look may look better not to just have them on every single step of that wall. These mixtures are mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson plus cadmium orange, plus a little bit of alizarin crimson, and a little bit of white. And I make the back part of this tile bluer. Or that I look at that, I probably will have my nasturtiums coming over that to help give some distance between this wall and those steps behind it. But those little ideas just come to you as you're painting and never hurts to explore them. Kind of let the painting dictate what's, what's the best way to go. So this front of this edge of that tile will catch a little bit of the light too, as will this one. Now these tiles, that wall has kind of settled over the years. So these tiles will actually be a little uneven. I'm going to go ahead and do the top edge of them. And my blue back here. Again, and I just, I paint this very rough. These old tiles are rough. And the top edge is going to be lighter. The top surface is going to be lighter than the upright surface. The light from above hits the flat portion more directly than it does the upright portion. So that's that's lighter. It's like the steps. The top, flat top is always lighter than the upright of the step. There are always exceptions, but that is the general general rule. Every rule there is, there's exceptions to it. So this, we're going to let this edge go up and then this edge come down. Not anything real obvious, but just gives us a little variety there. So that, that stone has settled over the years. Now here, I'm going to have a shadow coming across the front of this this top of this wall, but then light's going to be hitting there in front of the nasturtiums, so the nasturtiums will catch light. So I'll put my darker tones in here. This wall curves around. And I'm going to make the back of my shadow bluer so that it goes back. And see the angle of the light here? We're going to have that same angle on the top of this wall. I need to mix a little bit more of my tile color. Again, this is my mud, which is two parts ultramarine blue, plus one part alizarin crimson, plus cadmium orange. 
This gives you a nice burnt sienna color. If you want it more uh, red, you can add some cadmium red light into that. That's what I've used for my terracotta pots, containers that are the, holding the hydrangeas and some of the other flowers. There'll be petunias to the right side of this courtyard entry. It's the fun of painting. We can just make the world the way we want it to be. Make it happy. Now I want this to be a little warmer just to the front because that helps bring it forward. Now I bring some of my... The edge of the tiles is going to start showing back there. I want this to be lighter here. Nasturtiums are going to come down here and they're going to extend all the way down. And then we go back here, these will be under shadow. I'm going to bring a little green into that just to get the feeling that some of those nasturtium leaves are just kind of reflecting down. It also cools that just a touch. And this is a mixture of phthalo blue plus cadmium orange plus white. And it just makes kind of a sagey green. It just helps take that back. Also gives the feeling that maybe there's some moss on those tiles. I'm going to add a little bit of that, a little darker tone up here. Again, just gives some variety within the, in the tile. A little lighter here. There's a lot of mixing, a lot of mixing going on. Notice I keep wiping my brush. To have clean, pretty color on your canvas, you need a clean brush. And if you notice, I don't make these tones solid or smooth them out. Again, I want that texture. These old buildings, old tiles and walls, they have a lot of texture in them. And the light hitting this wall makes it come up. That one's way down. And I may have to go back in and add some more coolness into these tiles down here. But I can do that later to make them drop down. Right now I just get it all covered and then I can make those adjustments that I need to make. So here's our tile as it comes around. This is all going to be in shadow from the, the nasturtiums that are creeping down. And then this catches the light up here. Then we also have this edge on this side, comes around like so. And this is just a mixture of my mud plus liquid. Then I'm bringing a little blue onto these rocks just to make them drop down. And again, my nasturtiums will drape down in here. Bring a little bit of light right here. Soften that edge. Want to bring, okay, right now this is lining up with that stair, which I don't want. I want my light to be, come down a little closer to the foreground so that that brings the wall up above 
where that stair is down below. And by having this dark down here accentuates the light there. There we go. Still lining up a little bit right here. change. I'm not going to worry about that phone. It's probably somebody selling something. If it's important, they'll leave a message. You just lose too much painting time by answering phone, answering emails. So if it's somebody that's important, they'll call back or they'll leave me a message. They'll leave me a message and I can call them back. Say it in a minute. Okay. Now we want to make our tile lines and this again I use a mixture of my mud plus liquid and we're just having a double row of tile on the top of this wall. So we just bring this curve around and I may have to erase but Now if I need to erase that line, I can just do that, and we've erased it, and I can go back and do it again. I know some of you asked if I would, were disappointed I didn't show how I did that curved floor at the top of the stairs, but that one floor took me almost four hours to do, so I really couldn't show, I could show blocking in the color but I really have to stand kind of right in front of the canvas to do those those lines and it's then you can't see see what I'm doing if I'm standing right in front of the canvas then the camera won't show you can't see what I'm doing so anyhow now we begin the the cross lines are going to follow this and they're going to be, and then as the wall curves, they're going to turn a little bit. And I just pull them into the wet paint. That way, if I make a mistake, I can go back and paint them out. Makes it very easy. I need to start making them a little further apart, respectively. That'll light's going to hit, since the light's coming this kind of at an angle, that little front edge is going to get hit by light. That edge on the tile usually just pops up a little bit so the sunlight catches it. And these ones closer, I use almost pure white. That again helps bring the, the lines forward. As I go back, those tile lines become more muted. As I go further back, I make them bluer. I just use some of my ultramarine blue plus white mixture. And that's cool. Now here I think my nasturtiums are going to come over that, so I'm not real concerned about getting these in here. I'll go ahead and 
put some in, but I have a feeling my nasturtiums are going to come over that. And then also, we get in this side, side tile, we also get some of the up and down crevices. I'm going to do these, and this will do it. Thank you for watching my YouTube videos. Please feel free to ask questions. You can make them in the comments section. And please visit my blog. The link is in the description below. It's also the address is on the final frame of my video. And you can subscribe to my blog. You'll get an email notification every time I post a new blog. So there we go. There's our wall. And I just thank you very, very much. You have a super, super day.